So uh, good afternoon, everybody. We're here to reinforce our priority to coordinate and increase diversity and inclusion within state government. The Massachusetts economy is growing, but it's clear that not all communities are seeing the same degree of benefits and opportunities. And there's room for state government to improve in both employment and procurement practices to promote diversity and include more women and minorities, veterans, individuals with disabilities. And I'm proud to be joined today by the Black and Latino Legislative Caucus, by Secretary Urena, and a number of advocates for whom this issue is particularly important to announce our efforts to enhance the Office of Econ Access and Opportunity. This executive order that I've signed elevates the office to the governor's office from administration and finance. It'll be overseen by a deputy chief of staff for access and opportunity who will report directly to Steve Kadish, who is our chief of staff. And it creates a steering committee for access and opportunity for key cross-governmental administrative leaders. The responsibilities of the deputy chief of staff will be to oversee the steering committee and be the liaison across all the related agencies, commissions, task forces, and secretariats. To maximize existing resources and offices to increase employment diversity, to pursue new policy goals to increase equity for women, minorities, people with disabilities, veteran-owned small businesses, and procurement and the provision of state resources. And it's going to partner with key stakeholders within and outside of state government, including our Human Resource Division, our Supplier Diversity Office, our Office of Diversity and Equal Opportunity, Higher Education, and Labor and Workforce Development. We believe by elevating this office, we create a unique opportunity to put our stamp on our efforts to enhance diversity and increase participation among all communities in the success of the Commonwealth and to make sure that we bring prosperity and opportunity to parts of the Commonwealth that have not benefited from the success of the past few years. And with that said, I'd like to ask State Representative Russell Holmes, who's the chair of the Black and Latino Caucus, to say a few words. Thank you, Governor. When I read uh, on, the, on the web what the purpose of the office is, it is simple. It says, in short, access and opportunities is about opening doors and removing barriers. We certainly believe those doors and barriers should be removed, not in ANF, but certainly reporting to the governor's office. So we are very pleased. Uh, the governor, when we met several weeks ago, mentioned that this was uh, one of the actions that he would be taking. We're very pleased as a caucus to see that he did fulfill that action today. When I worked in college, I worked for Harvard Vanguard. I don't know if the governor knew that. And so did I. <laughs> <laughs> And Harvard, uh, when I was there, was uh, very forward-thinking. They not only worried about or were concerned in their culture about just racial diversity or women's, but they were also very uh, forward-thinking when it came to what to do about transgenders, uh, gays, and lesbians. And I still have friends and family who still work there, and they still say to me, even after Charlie was there and after all the time that he was there, it continued to become more diverse and it's a great place to work. And so we know the priority that he's had in the private sector, and it's great to see that he's going to continue that, that uh, priority here in, in state government. What we as a caucus uh, mentioned uh, several, months, several weeks ago when we met with the governor was that we wanted the office to increase transparency. We wanted to not have it so that we would need to go search amongst all the different agencies to know what diversity looks like across the Commonwealth. We're certainly hoping that this will do it. We also know that the office hasn't been staffed. And we certainly would ask now that as he looks for folks uh, to fill these positions to be folks who can hit the ground running, folks who've had this as an experience and can also not only just look simply at what do we do for folks who are hired, but also look for opportunities for purchasing for so often we don't have vendors who purchase and have a consideration around diversity as well. And we certainly would like to look at even opportunities from legislation when it comes to contracts. And so. Uh, as the governor uh, announced today with his schedule, we'll uh, be meeting with him right after this and rest assured this will be high on our priority. So we're thankful to join the governor, thankful to join uh, the commissioner and uh, lieutenant governor to say that this is the right step and we look forward to continuing to work with him in the future. Thank you. Thank you. 
Senator Dorsina Forey would also like a word. This will be the last time I have a chance to introduce her before St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready, all right. <laughs> Thank you, Governor Baker. I um, first want to thank Governor Baker um, and Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito for his work in elevating the Office of Access and Opportunity into the Governor's office. This important step shows that the state's commitment through Governor Baker um, to ensure high standards um, for job access and workforce diversity within state services, programs, and policy. Um, I thank the governor because the Access and Opportunity Office was created in 2010 un under then Governor Patrick, um, but this is important because the office was to serve as a single point of coordination and accountability to implement policies for equal opportunity and non-discrimination. And over the years, the Office of Access and Opportunity has established workforce participation goals for women and people of color on state-assisted public construction jobs. Not only that, they form guidelines around the implementation of services disabled veterans own business enterprise program, which is critical. How do we work with our veterans that are coming back home that have small businesses here in our Commonwealth? They also created the Civil Rights Impact Analysis Policy, which requires executive branch agencies to undertake an analysis to identify whether implementation of proposed regulation would likely result in disparate impact on members of protected class or classes to take steps to mitigate such impacts if identified. So these are just a few of the many accomplishes, accomplishments that the Office of Access and Opportunity has achieved during its tenure. But what Governor Baker is doing today is important because he is elevating it to the governor's office, making sure that the new director will report to the chief of staff, staff and the deputy chief of staff. And I know under the leadership of Governor Baker and the positive changes he has made, the Office of Access and Opportunity will continue to thrive and maximize productivity, creativity, and diversity in the workforce, in the workplace. So I look forward to working with Governor Baker and his administration to ensure that all the Commonwealth's re residents have full access to economic opportunity. So this is such an important step because it's sending the message from the top that diversity is important when it comes to women, that diversity is important when it comes to people of color, and diversity is important when it comes to veterans, our veterans who are returning home. So I'm grateful to be here in partnership, working with Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, and also the Massachusetts Black and Latino Legislative Caucus, and the other colleagues who are here today, people who have been working on the forefront of this issue for a long time. And to see this elevation is critical. And so I look forward to working with all of you. I see Reggie Nunnally here, who was supplier office of, of, of supplier, supplier diversity. diversity officer. Thank you, Ron Malo, who's here, was the head of access and opportunity, continues to serve in the administration. So we look forward to working with all of you to make sure that these numbers reflect the diversity of our great Commonwealth. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Do you have questions on this? Governor, were you uh, thinking about this when you were campaigning? Uh, was it in your mind then? Was it on your uh, radar? Or is it something that's just come about now after you took office? Well, we certainly uh, spent a fair amount of time during the course of the campaign. Karen, Karen and I both did uh, campaigning in, um, in cities and in communities of color and engaging in a conversation with them about what kinds of things the state should do better with respect to bringing more um, economic opportunity uh, to those communities as well as more diversity in state government. And one of the things we heard over and over again from people um, was that the procurement process that the state has, and the state buys five to seven billion dollars worth of goods and services every year, depending upon how you do the math, the quasis buy even almost a similar amount. So there's a lot of economic opportunity there. It's a very complicated process, and, um, and it's one that in some cases, um, your ability to actually manage and, and, uh, and navigate the procurement process says more about your ability to win a contract than your ability to actually provide the service. And one of the things we would like to do is to make sure that small businesses, women-owned businesses, veteran-owned businesses, minority-owned businesses have an opportunity uh, to participate on a level playing field with respect to those procurement initiatives. This was something we talked about a lot during the campaign, and I'm anticipating that um, once we staff this office, and we have a number of people we're talking to about this, uh, that we'll be able to make 
some significant strides with respect to basically opening up the kimono and giving a lot of people who currently don't have an opportunity to bid uh, to bid and to succeed. Um, do, do, you, do you have a, a set number of staff you're hiring? Is that, is that something you figured out in advance? Or I think, um, I think it was, uh, the answer to that is not yet. It's going to depend to some extent on, on who we bring in. We've been talking to a number of people about creating this type of position. Um, and once we create, and once now that we've done that, um, we'll conduct some interviews and staff it accordingly.